up to you. you. You can do a real extremely simple, straightforward thing like this, and there's nothing to it. Uh, if you feel ill at ease, just painting the feather group definition in, pencil it lightly on there, use a real soft pencil, and uh, it'll, it, your painting will cover it up. You, you can loosely define the feather groups, uh, and once you get them in there, if you want to go further than that, and start giving it more definition, a little more realism, that, that's an individual call. Uh, a, a question came up, and I'm having a memory lapse here. Epoxy sculpt, isn't that? Yeah, that's. What would you use in your words? That's the two-part part. Yeah, that's, that's the stuff I was trying to think of. Epoxy sculpt. A uh, question came up about putting eyes in and uh, what I use for the high lids. That's typically what I use. Yeah, or colors. Yeah. Where'd you get this? Use the hand. Looks like uh, yeah, that's another one, uh, Cullis. You want to take the address off of there? Sure. And uh, there's a phone number on there. It's a two-part thing. Give me that phone. There it is. And uh, how long does it take for that stuff to dry? Uh, you probably got 20 minutes, half hour of working time. 20 minutes, I'd say you see. And, and it sets up half hour. It's you can paint it. You you can mix it up, and you can layer it on, and you can paint over it right away. It doesn't have to really set up hard to paint over. It, you can paint on it immediately. Is it hard to sand within the first couple hours? Uh, I would let it dry several hours before I tried sanding it, just to be on the safe side. Yeah. But uh, it's good stuff. It, it works nice, and it's nice to texture, you know, while it's still in a workable state. Yeah. What do you got with that stuff, Tom? Probably a half hour working time. Yeah, some you have. Yeah. Beyond a half hour, it's, it's getting kind of iffy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, did you use water with it? And yeah. Stand it a little bit, or some some you can direct. I'll probably say but some you can yeah. put a dip in more water. That makes it a little you can easier to work it out and then work it. Yeah, and then it's mold it out, it. Yeah. blend it in better. I even take acetone and brush and smooth it out. And but even uh, uh, like I, when I when I put my ivory <coughs> into it, I use little dental tools and dental picks yeah. and uh, put a drop of water on it. it keeps it from turning yeah, pretty cool. That, it it's pretty cool. It's pretty workable. Yeah. yeah. Is it true? Another yeah, thing, uh, I, I didn't bring any with me, but another thing that's good for uh, some light texturing and stuff is uh, you can get it at the craft store, Golden, who makes Golden paint products, acrylic paints. You can get this molding paste. And uh, what it is, it's 100% pure acrylic. And you, it, it's about the consistency of lard, and then there's some thinner stuff. But the, the heavier molding paste is real good. Uh, you know, one of these. This bird here, where I put the, uh, join the head on, where at the neck joint there to the body, it had a s slit in there. I took that molding paste, which is 100% real heavy acrylic, and just brush it on there, and then wet your brush and smooth it off. You can't even see where that seam line is anymore. And there was a definite open mark all the way around the neck. So I just use that uh, heavy molding paste. And when you buy it, you can buy the regular or the real heavy stuff. And it's real good if you want to texture something. Uh, 
uh, because you can <coughs> lay it on, you can stipple it, uh, and you can play around with different textures. So anybody got any questions specifically about painting or? I guess what, uh, like on your white, uh, it creates your white, are you, are you uh, mixing? What, what, no, what I'm using no is, ochre, is what I've used is just uh, soft white. Just soft white, yeah. okay. You know what it's called? So it's called hard white? But, but you're airbrushing? No, the, no, these are painted. I'm such a lousy air pressure. I got two air brushes and I never use them hardly. <laughs> they just I know the feeling. <laughs> I think I am white. Warm white, not so warm white. <clears throat> warm white. What do I know? <laughs> but that's basically titanium with you know, ochre. Yes. Yeah, it's. Uh, and then. If you want to paint any feather definition in there, you can use gray, any contrasting color. Uh, I've used, uh, one color I like is a smoke pearl. <coughs> Somewhat of a gray, but has a little amber tone to it. Uh, that's pretty good. Oh, their bill is so sharp, it's like a needle, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Do they do stab their fish with it, or what do they do? I don't know. They sweep it back and forth, I guess. <laughs> talk, to bugs, some, don't talk to some of these bird authorities. <laughs> I've never seen one in the field. They, they used to get hit by cars on gravel roads, right? Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They come through. They take off out of the ditch and own it sometimes. Oh. I've never seen one. If you go out to South Dakota or North Dakota in the spring, they come right through the marshes like that. Yeah, you go to Is that more than 10 miles from my house? <laughs> more than 10 miles. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Lake, Lake Billsby, down by Cannon Falls. I know, that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's a great spot to see. Where it is, it's one of the best in the... Billsby Reservoir down Cannon Falls. Billsby? Yeah. Yeah. Billsby. They, they have these there, there. so... You know, on the... Shallow end yes, of the river goes to the north end. Well, it's north end. Uh, Very The last one, did you explain that? Yeah, it went to the west end of the clear and the head. Or if I ran off. Well, there's a yeah. stiff okay. Or if I ran off. Or if I ran off. Yeah, can you show them? Yeah, yeah. Can yeah. you show them? Can you show them? Can you show them? Can you show them? Can you show them? There's all kinds of short lines. You get the sense of you know, there when you color and highlight and things and feathers. Okay. Uh, what's the, uh, what's the, what's the paint around here? Uh, what's the paint around here? What's the paint? Yeah. Well, yeah, we went to the Calamon in late April. Because uh, a lot of Sherbert, uh, Sherbert what, Refuge is one of the better places in northern material to see. Oh, yeah. Sure. You can see the top of the place. It's been on. You can see tons of different products. They don't taste good. I heard it tastes just like aluminum. Someone put aluminum in open cream. Any other questions? Uh, Any particular brand of uh, paint that you use? Oh, Joe Sonia's uh, or Golden. Yeah, for what it's worth, uh, and this is not my judgment, uh, what Keith Mueller says, uh, he likes golden acrylics better than Joe Sonia's. He said they're, they're richer in pigment is the reason why. Uh, yeah, I do find that it's, it's a much stiffer paint. You know, I mean, it can be thinned out to a thinner consistency, but they're uh, apparently richer in pigment. He's, he feels it's a better quality paint. And you can get gold in a blick. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, blick carries some. They have yeah. real good supply. And I think Michael's carries some of them. Does Michael's carry gold? Yeah, yeah, I think they do. They do. I could be mistaken. Yeah, they do? Yeah. 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 Michael's carries the gold. And you put a gesso on to begin with? Yeah, seal it with uh, lacquer, a good uh, sealer. Uh, 
what, what's the, uh, the common? Deft. Deft. Deft, yeah. The spray, the spray get, get spray deft and just spray it. To the spray can. Seal it real good and then gesso it. Well, depending well, on what you're depending on what you're doing. My approach to doing them, I like to. You paint the whole bird white here to begin with. To the base. And the gesso. Yeah, so this, this is just a gesso. There. No, this this is painted white here. Uh, you didn't have to paint the neck white. No, because I paint over it. The gesso is white. And what I like, my approach is to use the colors that I use on here, which are sienna, raw sienna, some yellow, and some white. And I like to stipple it on, the, re the reason being, that way you avoid a flat, monotone look, you know, instead of just painting solid color on, you'll end up looking like you all have to. Yeah, th this way it gives you something of a look of feathers. There's an easy way to do it. Just keep stippling it on there. And just jump around. Don't... If you stipple it solidly, then that's the same as just painting it solidly. So if you jump around on it, skip and jump around and, and put some contrasting uh, colors in there. Like, uh, or I use burnt sienna here to get these little feather lines in there. It kind of breaks it up a little bit. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's just to add some interest to it. Anything else? Dick Blick, yeah. yeah. The, the basic remember, remember when you're painting. Uh, you usually put on what they call the base coat. And which is pretty much what you got here. But then you want some highlights, you want some dark areas. So you know what your base coat is. It's, it's going to be a mixture of raw sienna and burnt sienna is what I use, which is different from what Del Herbert uses. He uses raw sienna and then some other weird old color, and I don't know what it is. I would guess it's got to be something like a, a real light, creamy tan. I've never had this particular paint. Um, provincial beige. Provincial beige. It's, it's probably something like a real creamy tan color. Uh, just seeing what it's got. This said the head and neck base color is a mixture of raw sienna and cadmium yellow light. Yeah, that's what I use. Is it, uh, that's, that's what I use. He uses his provincial beige and sienna. Yeah, don't don't get too fixated on the colors. Use whatever gets you the results. Uh, so to use the for the the cover coat, do you use the same thing as you did for, for the base? For the base, the base coat. What are we doing? We're mixing up your. You already got your base coat. Right. I was looking for the wash coat to go All right. Here's here's what you got. See, the thing is, if you if you put a solid wash on, you're going to start color shift, but the whole thing is going to shift. So you want to 
apply it to selectively and randomly because otherwise you're going to end up with just a solid wash of it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're going to end up looking like that. But it was still stuck out that far on There's hardly any color difference. There is a little bit. It's pretty subtle. Uh, and so, to achieve that, you just continue to lock in. Okay, here's all right. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lighten this up a little bit. If I look at this and then I decide, oh gee, I've really got dark. You know, I built up some of the color intensity got built up on there, and it gets darker and darker and darker. And I want to lighten it up a little bit. So I take the same basic colors and I use uh, yellow. What did you call that paper? Pad? It's called palette paper. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Just plain water. Yeah, that's all I'm going to use now. And another thing you can do is uh, get yourself a hair dryer, and when you're painting, you can speed the process along. You know, you want to dry it quicker, just blow dry it. Just pick yourself up a no, oh, I got one. blow dryer. Whenever they go belly up, I save them and fix them and put them in my shop. I've <laughs> three of them. Uh, all right, I know just from experience, I don't want to use that yellow real strong like that. So I'm going to dilute it pretty good with the water. No, in the mirror. I'm talking about what I'm All right, now take a good look at this. And just neck area here and see what you got there. <laughs> I'm going to have difficulty doing this because I didn't bring a blow dryer. I did. Oh, get that guy out. I get that many hits, no. <laughs> but you're the webmaster. Yes. Yep. See, by stippling it on there like that, it gives you more of a textured look. Mm -hmm. 
instead of just being solid and uniform, you know, just monotone. And what I'm so I'm just going to put a little more yellow on it. And again, I'm intentionally staying away from certain areas so you can see the effect of it. I'll give you a little comparison. And don't be afraid to experiment with it. It's the only way you're going to learn it. Yeah, painting is one thing. You can't screw it up. You can always redo it. <laughs> you know? Yellow jaundice. <laughs> <laughs> this is a doctor. Doctor. Okay. Essentially, what we're doing is we're taking advantage of one of the characteristics of acrylics, which is the show color from the meat. So you can lay, you can put a color layer down. You can overpaint it and. It gives you some depth of color because it's showing up from what I need. And you can build layers of color, you know, and have a multicolored effect. Uh, just like you would when, when you, you look at a bird, you look down into its feathers, you see different uh, colors coming out of it. So you blend a little yellow with that. So what's that, raw sienna? That, this, this is raw sienna. But I want you to see what's going to happen by doing this. Because I've lightened it up underneath. Oh, Is that, is that a movie? You're doing right now? Yeah. Come on, Mark. Say, <laughs> say something. Say something. Say something really interesting. Is that the movie you're taking there? Uh, yes, it is. Oh, good for you. <laughs> good for me. I think it's good for you. It's posterity and stuff. What this is about is a question came up, what do you do when you get too dark? It's and okay, you've been doing that. Huh? <laughs> yeah. What, what I'm doing, I didn't, intentionally didn't do the head and underneath the chin just for the contrast, mm -hmm. but just showing you what you can do if you get too dark. Because even thin washes, if you get enough of them going, can uh, darken up more than you might want. And the question came up, well, can you lighten it up then? Yeah, and that's what I'm doing here.
Have you been down to Billsby? Are the birds there? There's been some there, yeah. They'll, I think, from now on, towards through April. April's a good, that's the migration for shorebirds. The abyssets? Yeah, you they're, you know, they're there, there when they're there. Um, there's always somebody down there, too. It's a, it's, uh, Dakota County is one of, probably one of the best. In the area. I think they, they're now trying to protect the area because it's such a good area for shorebirds. We saw some nice flocks of them out in South Dakota in the spring. <coughs> when, when is it they come? Now, between now and another maybe three weeks? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah April's April. the best time to see the shorebirds. Yeah, they're, they're the first ones coming back. What, what's, what's the opportunities for photography if, with a. On, on Billsby? Be limited? Or? Limited, yeah, down there. Uh, yeah. Another uh, place that's sort of famous is Salt Lake, out on the, on the border, the Madison, Marietta area, in Minnesota. It's, in fact, the, the lake is in both states. And, it, uh, it's interesting, though. You take, like, uh, this black bellied clover that's in this magazine here. I think there's a black belly clover here. Yeah. You know what color? Yeah, well, that's these have a, guys have these have for a more, little more bulk to it. And then we have yeah. Yeah. Ruddy Turnstone. You want to see Ruddy Turnstone? Yeah. Let's make sure that one is an extra is a, well, a well, on, on, Last year when we were duck hunting out in the No, last summer when I was fishing up at Devil's Lake. I have to believe it'll come to Minnesota soon, except there was a road. I was in Virginia when they opened it up there. In the first year, of course, the hue and cry. Yeah, yeah. The you know, green road cut across. Oh my God, you can't. If there was yeah. one, but yeah. you'd go on the Potomac River, you'd go to turn those bass fishes, there'd be thousands of them. You know, and as you... Are they trumpeter swans? Or they were trumpeter swans. I think those, those are the trumpeters. Trumpeters. Which are the bigger ones. Yeah. The bigger ones. Yeah. And as you get this, close uh, to them, then they start hissing at you, just like a goose does, and they'll start... Yeah, I think so. Beating yeah, on your boat yeah. with their wings. Yeah. There's thousands. Oh, yeah. That's pretty flashy and, birds. You know, there's 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 just there's two guys. Black belly floor. In a big yeah. bass boat, you start to think. But when you yeah. get down there, yeah. they're, they're down 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 they, they don't they, have they, any of this. They, they tear the wings. They don't have any of this brown. You ever watch one of them? Well, no, they do. You look at them close, and you're going to see all these little subtle feathers. You know, just like, you know, this. Here's the place. It's noticeable. Yeah. It's still a little bit too yellow. I would have to you know, cover up some of the yellow. But yeah, you can. So don't be afraid. You know, if you can get too dark, light it up. One thing to watch for if you're painting really is your workspace you know, really relevant right, right there. Be because if it is, you have a tendency to paint too dark. You get, a, you get out from there because it's so bright, the colors look bright. Then you get somewhere else and then they look too dark. They're too intense. So be careful of that. Because if you put this under a direct, real bright light, that's going to look lighter than yet. And then you take it in average normal lighting, and it's going to. Then you'll really see how dark it really is. Well, you know, when you join your swan, hold the neck. Yeah, you have to have that screen going up. If you do any wood burning, okay. burn the follicles and stuff into the feathers and stuff, then you have to worry about how many coats you put on and stuff like that because you could fill it up. But the smoothies? No. You don't have to worry about that. Well, I can probably draw.